How's everyone doing? Great. Wonderful. Well, I'm super, super excited to be here, and I want to thank all of you guys because it really takes a large community to care about food, be passionate about it, and share your different point of views. There was a big meeting. I mean, Gunnar hosted a big meeting, but there was also a big meeting in Southeast Asia today. And as you all know, I was just hoping... First of all, I'm super excited that the, it was in Singapore, because I don't think any food city in the world is more diverse than Singapore. And I was just hoping that the US president, the gift that he would get from uh, the North Korean leader would be some stinky cabbage. If we all eat kimchi, there will be definitely more love in the air. And I was just hoping, I hope, I saw they ate some rice and they shared some dishes, which is a big upgrade because normally the US president, he likes steaks and ketchup. We don't like steaks and ketchup here at the EAT conference. We want to lower that. So I hope that one thing that hopefully comes out of this meeting is more kimchi, right? And there's something to that. I was born in one of the huts that you saw here in Ethiopia. What's considered good food in Ethiopia is really most of the food is vegetarian and every now and then we eat meat to break fast. But we eat based on a spiritual compass. This is one thing that every single person here can do. Start eating and start value how you purchase food based on a spiritual compass. Doesn't mean you have to be religious. If you are, great. If you have meeting one of your neighbors come from a different spirituality, fantastic. It doesn't mean that if you're not Muslim, doesn't mean you don't need to fast, right? So eating based on a spiritual compass is something we can all do. I was raised in a fishing village in Sweden, and my grandmother was the cook, but we ate fish basically every day. We had local food, and once we had seared mackerel or cod, the next day we have mackerel soup with some potatoes that grew outside. And maybe even the third day, there were some more fish dumplings or something like that. So we ate nose to tail, local produced, way before it even was a trend, right? So locally produced, lower sort of our protein intake day by day, and we didn't waste anything. The third thing that is very, very important about this is that the EAT conference is not Vegas. This is not Vegas. This is a very important thing. Because you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But what happens at the EAT conference only matters if all of you guys talk about it and share it and talk about it a lot and meet new people that you probably would not talk to otherwise. I brought some new people, some young guns with me. They're interrupters. They're annoying. They're passionate. They're interrupters in the space. I brought two. Can you guys stand up here? You know what you're talking about. We brought two. What's your name? Yeah. Yep. Jonas. And Jonas. These are urban farmers. And they taught me a ton. They actually changed our business. Thank you, Jonas and William. They're young, they're handsome, they're kind of more Swedish looking than I am. So, <laughs> so it helped, helped me in many ways. But the most important thing that they brought to our business was their interrupters in the space. And I'm going to get to that. When I started to cook, all the cooking, the food was supposed to be French. And it was very male dominated. And that was weird to me because my grandmother was the one who taught me to cook. And I, a lot of things, but I'm not French. And I love food. I traveled to Japan, I worked in Singapore, I worked in Switzerland, eventually to France, and I realized that good food is everywhere. Highly debated, but it's everywhere. When I cooked Barack Obama's first date dinner, the message was, Marcus, I talked to Sam Cass, I was here um, throughout the whole EAT conference, and Sam and I talked about, we have to present good food. It's the first date dinner. It's the prime minister of India. We have to present good food. 
And I was like, but what does that mean? Well, two things. The Prime Minister of India was vegetarian, and Michelle Obama had just started her garden program. So our opportunity was to create a vegetarian-inspired meal, inspired from the First Lady's garden. It had to be delicious, and our audience was diverse. It could not just be only vegetarian, but, but give options, right? It had to be delicious, it had to be done on time. We had to serve 400 people in 44 minutes, four courses, that's not easy. I can do that. But the most important thing was to figure out what good food meant. Up until that point, all state dinners had been French. If you're going to have a guest of honor from India, wouldn't it make sense that you serve some Indian food? So that's what we did. But the whole point is that good food means so many different things. When I got the opportunity and challenge to work with Gunnil's husband, Petter Stodal, in the amazing, amazing Hotel King in Scandinavia, we started with one project in Gothenburg. And he said, just do good food. And I was like, what does that mean? We started with one hotel, one restaurant, 10 years ago. Now we have 25 platforms. We serve 4 million people in four countries a year. So we had to inspire our communities, which is really divided into two tribes. One tribe is our 2,500 co-workers. Good looking guys like that. And if William is not inspired to the food that we're gonna do, he's not, A, he's not gonna partner with us, and B, he's not gonna think it's good food. And good food for him and for us means that we have our own urban garden on the roof on a building that was empty for 50 years. The post office in Gothenburg was empty for 50 years. Petter bought it. I had the challenge to create good food. They created an urban garden. So if more people work together and find empty buildings, fill them with love, personality, identity, and good food, you create a workforce, but you also create a space of interrupting and new commerce. Because when you serve four million people a year, we part of the problem or the solution, which obviously every single person here, you're part of the problem or the solution. And that's what's so amazing with EAT, that Gunnar have inspired us all to come from all over the world to really figure out how can we leave the world in a better place for the next generation, right? Isn't that what it's all worth to do? Isn't that why we get up and push and are so passionate about food? The idea of what good food means to you is highly personal, but keep asking that question because it will evolve and it will be several different key creeks and stakeholders to define what good food is. Stay hungry, stay curious. But think about how does my purchase empower as a family, as a community, as a tribe? How does that impact, right? So if everyone starts thinking about eating based on, a, uh, uh, based on a spiritual compass, if everyone actually knows how to cook, just that simple thing, if we learn, we don't have to be chefs, but just learn how to cook, that simplifies things because if I buy a piece of meat, then I know the leftovers I can use for a ramen dish the next day. That very simple thing, right? And also, just like we want to stay up on technology and we want to stay up on other things, if you don't know how to cook and if you don't know how to eat based on a spiritual compass, you're going to be left behind. And we don't want that as evolved people, right? Stay hungry, stay curious, stay highly passionate, meet interrupters. Speak to people that you most likely come from a different space than you are. And maybe the clue to really, really, really good food might be there. I've been fortunate to, I started cooking when there was basically no internet. But the idea of, of food, of good food, was equal, equally highly passionate, highly discussed. War has always been created around food, the haves and don't have. Today, 
we're really on the verge of, we've already figured out how to get to the moon, right? We already figured out how to, we don't even have to drive our cars anymore, right? So imagine, we will be able, collectively, we keep working together, and we keep meeting interrupters like them, and keep communicating to them that they matter. One of the major things that they said to me this morning was, people have to take us seriously. We're young urban farmers in Gothenburg. We're not some hippies. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hippies have created a big food movement all over the world. But I get it. Young, passionate, super engaged people is the key to be interrupters in the space and to keep the dialogue about what good food is, right? So remember, learn how to cook, eat and cook with a spiritual compass, and most importantly, what happens at Stockholm at the Eat Conference? <laughs> spread it. If you spread it to all your platforms, all your friends, all your communities, all your tribes, next year when we meet up here, and there will be another person speaking here that might not have as many patterns as I have. <laughs> the key is that every year we need to move this forward and we need to get closer to solving what good food means. Thank you so much. Keep eating, keep staying hungry. Thank you.